Over the past couple of years, I've been asked what my skincare is, so I felt it was time I perhaps do a video on it. I'm going to share with you my favorite skincare products. Some of them I make myself and some I don't, but here's the common thread between all of them. None have any chemical or synthetic ingredients, whether that be in the form of preservatives, emulsifiers, emollients, thickeners, or colors. Here's what I'll be sharing. My homemade skin cream, including how you can make it yourself at home. My face mask that is only one ingredient, commonly found in most people's refrigerator. What I use on my skin after showering instead of standard lotion. My homemade face wash, including how you can make it. My facial toner and an all natural sunscreen that has the purest, best ingredients. This is me 26 years ago. Today, my skin is not the same and in no way am I exempt from the aging process. However, at age 48, I think I'm doing pretty good, but not without effort. I take care of myself. This has to be said, even if you've heard it a hundred times elsewhere, I truly believe my healthy diet, low stress lifestyle, and good sleeping habits have contributed to my good skin. And I've also never been a smoker nor a drinker, not because of any conviction, but I simply never had a taste or an interest for it. The hands of time may not be able to be turned back, but with good care to our bodies at any age, the hands of time can at least be slowed down, regardless if you're 40, 50, or 80. As far as my skin texture goes, I have normal skin. It's not dry, it's not oily. My skin takes oil really well. Therefore, most of my skincare is oil-based or at least has some oil in it. Since we all have different skin, this may not work for you, but be inspired by what maybe could work for you, or at least get some ideas from this video and disregard the things that won't work for you. With that said, let's get into my skincare products, starting with my face mask. Twice a week, I use a raw egg egg mask. Egg yolk is packed with skin fortifying nutrients. My routine is to use this egg mask on Mondays and Thursdays, and I follow it up with a sugar exfoliating scrub. Here's what I do. Open the egg into a bowl. Optionally, you can add a drop of rosemary essential oil. The rosmarinic acid in the rosemary is a powerful antioxidant that's good for skin and hair, but it's not required. The egg is the star ingredient. And P.S. These are eggs from my own chickens that I have total control on what I feed them. They're super healthy birds, but I understand not everybody raises their own chickens. So get the best quality egg that's available to you. Then I rub it all over my face. Be sure to do this over a sink because the application can be messy. Then I let it dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. You'll feel a nice tightening of the egg as it dries. I cover and save the egg in the fridge for my second mask later in the same week. Then the following week, I start with a fresh egg again. Meanwhile, as the egg dries, I'll prepare my sugar scrub. It's simply a tablespoon of raw cane sugar with a drizzle of olive oil over top, and I mix it up. 15 minutes after application, I'll rinse the egg off. Usually I do this in the shower, but for demonstration purposes, over the kitchen sink will do today. After my face is fully rinsed, I'll apply the sugar scrub by gently rubbing it over my skin. Now go gentle because the sugar can be a bit rough if it's rubbed too hard. Rinse again thoroughly with warm water so that the olive oil in the scrub remains soft and rinses well. Pat dry and that's it for the mask. What I use on my skin after a shower is not lotion, but simply olive oil. I pour some extra virgin olive oil into a little bottle like this and keep it in my bathroom. After a shower, I put a dollop in my hand and apply. Does this make my skin greasy? Not at all. Skin absorbs oil quickly, actually much better than it does water. Plus, I'm not slathering it on as if I'm going to deep fry myself. It's a light application that within a matter of minutes, it's absorbed and I get dressed without any issues of oil stained clothes or other problems. Okay, now let me show you how I put together my homemade face wash. I'll provide links for all the ingredients in the video description if you're interested. The first ingredient is an all-natural liquid castile soap. 
I buy mine from the bulk section at a natural food store, which is why it's in a repurposed jar with a weight sticker on it. But it's the same as what you buy in an official packaging bottle on the shelf. You can buy unscented peppermint or lavender. I'm using unscented. The second ingredient is 100% pure honey. It doesn't have to be raw honey, just 100% pure honey. Cheap brands will splice the honey with lesser quality ingredients and it's not 100% pure honey. So at the end of the day, just make sure it's real. Simply combine the two at an even 50-50 ratio. Half Castile soap, half honey. The container of mine I'm pouring into is six ounces. So I poured three ounces of the liquid Castile soap here and now I'm pouring three ounces of the honey. However big your pump or squeeze bottle is, just keep with the half and half proportion and you'll be good. The honey will emulsify into the Castile soap simply by stirring it in. It's a bit of a clump at first, but just keep stirring until it's fully blended and smooth. If you haven't used a face wash like this before, you will be astounded at how good your skin will feel. The Castile soap gently cleanses without stripping your skin because it's made of oil, but don't worry, it's not gonna make your skin all greasy, just clean. And the honey hydrates and makes your skin feel like pure silk. I love it. Keep it next to your sink for the next time you wash your face. This is my facial toner that I buy on Amazon. It's the one skincare product I use that does not contain oil. On days I do not use my face mask, I'll apply the toner to my face after a shower with a cotton ball. And I also apply the toner after washing my face before bed. Once it air dries in the morning, I apply my sunscreen that also doubles as an excellent skin moisturizer. After the toner in the evening, I apply my homemade skin lotion. What I like about this formula is there's one, no alcohol in it, and two, no chemical preservatives that are often found in other witch hazel formulas. This is my daily face sunscreen and I love it. It's truly all natural and uses non-nano zinc as its active ingredient. Look at these incredible ingredients that moisturize skin. It goes on light, not like paste. My skin absorbs it quickly and a little goes a long way. It smells like delicious coconut due to the coconut oil it contains. Even if it weren't sunscreen, I love it as a moisturizer. Now what you've been waiting for, my homemade skin cream. I'll provide links to the ingredients in the description if you're interested, and be sure to stick around after I show you how to make it, since I'm going to give you some tips on how you can modify it. The liquid oils I'm using today are apricot oil, jojoba, walnut, and Haitian black castor oil. Evenly fill one fourth cup with the oils, which works out to be one tablespoon of each. Pour into a small bowl. Next, I'm going to put together the butters cocoa, mango, and shea. In total, I'll be combining these into one tablespoon plus one teaspoon. Place the butters into a pan to warm. Now only put the butters in, not the liquid oils. On the lowest heat possible, warm the butters until they are nearly melted and then turn off the heat. Stir until they completely dissolve. Now add to the bowl of the other oils. Right here is where you can optionally add one to three drops of essential oil. These are my personal favorite for skincare, frankincense, geranium, and rosemary. You can add one of these or another if you prefer. Just don't use a citrus essential oil since they can cause skin hypersensitivity to sunlight. I'm opting to not add any with this batch, but again, if you wish, this is where you would add those one to three drops. Stir to mix. Place it in the refrigerator for at least two to three hours. Longer is just fine if you're busy. A couple of hours later and now it's solidified. To turn it into a creamy texture, stir it again.
I'm going to transfer it to this clean repurposed jar and that's it. It will remain solid up to 75 degrees. Above that, it will become a liquid state, but you can still use it like that. So don't worry if you live in a really hot environment. It will re-solidify once the environment cools down again. You can use it on your face, your hands, your lips, your whole body. For my face, I just use the slightest amount since a little goes a long way. So how you can adjust this recipe is you can vary the liquid oils. For example, you can use only one liquid oil like olive oil, so long as the measurement stays at 1 4 cup. Or you can do two liquid oils, eight liquid oils. Again, so long as the ratio stays at 1 4 cup liquid oils to one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of the butters. As for the butters, you can modify to use only one butter instead of all three, such as shea butter only. So long as the total measurement remains at one tablespoon plus one teaspoon to that one fourth cup of liquid oils. Now I've been doing this a really long time, so I've built up a big collection of oils over the years. I was keeping the oil selection simple for today's demonstration, but sometimes I add up to 11 unique liquid oils, but they always total the 1 4 cup and the butter ratio is the same. It doesn't matter if I use only one butter or three butters, 11 oils or two oils. Keep the proportions the same and you will always get this nice creamy texture. Don't use anything but fat soluble oils with this recipe because adding water or watery like liquids such as aloe juice or rose water will require an emulsifier in order to blend with the oils. Otherwise, they'll just separate and the water will sit on top of the oils. A lotion that needs emulsification is a whole other deal that I'm not teaching here today. So long as this recipe I've shown you stays as all oils, no emulsifier is needed. Also, if you're curious if you can use this oil or that oil that I didn't mention here, no need to ask me in the comments section because the answer is yes. Any oil will work. Lastly, after perhaps a test batch, you can easily double or triple the recipe so long as the proportions stay the same. Store it long term in the fridge where it will last indefinitely. It will never go bad. And then just transfer portions that you want to use to a smaller container that you keep in your vanity or wherever. I hope this video gave you some inspiration and I wish you happy skincare. Bye for now.